Welcome to another episode of the A to Z of Wine. Everything you want to know about wine, but we're afraid to ask. I'm your host, Shanaz, a fellow wine lover and lover of wine travel. Today, we are at Newhall Wine Estate in Essex. It is just the start of winter, the grapes have been picked, the leaves have fallen off the vines, and it's time to start all over again in the vineyard. So Andy, what, what do we have here? What are these vines? So this is some of our Pinot Meunier, which we planted Ooh. five years ago now. Okay. Um, so as you can see, they're quite young. Yeah, and they're quite thin for, stalk, isn't it? Yeah, certainly for here at Newhall, this is yes. quite unique because most of the vines we have are 20, 30 odd years old. As obviously okay. they're, they're huge. They're huge. So the Meunier, why did you decide to plant Meunier here? So Meunier is one of the classic champagne varieties and mm -hmm. we didn't have any here at Newhall. Okay, um, so you do have Chardonnay. So we have Chardonnay, have we have Pinot, Pinot Noir, Noir uh, and so now we finally have some Meunier and okay. we will be planting uh, a further 10 acres with some Meunier in it in the field just behind us as wow. well next year. Fantastic. Because um, we found it's grown, it grows really well here yes. and it's been really popular. So. Ah, okay. So before you had Pinot Meunier, what would you have put in your sparkling wine? Because of course you are one of the first vineyards in England to have made sparkling yes, wine so in we, what, the early 80s? Yeah, I think, uh, 85 I believe yeah. was the first production okay. we had. Um, that was with Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and... Pinot Blanc? It would have been Pinot Blanc. It was Pinot yeah, Blanc. It would have been so Pinot very Blanc. similar grape varieties to what they use in Francia Corta, um in, in the north of Italy, really. So yes, yeah, very much as, as with most of the things that the English wine, it was our take mm -hmm. on, a, uh, on, on, a, on a classic European variety. Yes. But I suppose as well, I mean, the, the grape varieties that you choose to plant here, so you plant, what is it, 15 or 18 different varieties? So we have, yeah, we have 18 different varieties in total. Um, That's pretty we have, phenomenal. Yeah, we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of Pinot Noir. Yes. Um, we have some of the first Bacchus wines that were planted in the UK. Yes. We were very much a pioneer of bringing that to the forefront, and that's now a huge English success story. Wow. Um, so, so, for example, when we planted this plantation uh, five years ago, mm -hmm. automatically we knew we wanted Pinot Meunier. Mm -hmm. We also knew that we had to plant some more Bacchus, just yes. because it is, and it grows so well here in Essex yes. in the Crouch Valley. What kind of climate? How is it different from, say, Kent or Sussex or some of the other English wine growing regions? Mm -hmm. So, um, Essex and East Anglia broadly mm -hmm. has always been one of the driest parts of the UK, okay. like for you know, generations and generations. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some of the longest growing degree of grey, so it's, uh, we have basically the, the most sunshine hours of pretty much anywhere in the country. Wow. Which means we have, you know, through the broad scope of summer and even in the spring and in the autumn, we still have really long hours of sunlight, which really can make a huge difference to the wines. Yes. And with it being so dry as well, it helps an awful lot with uh, disease management. So yes. we have less problems with disease because it's so dry. It's true. That must help incredibly. I suppose as well, um, the, the, the dryness, but also the longer hours of sunshine, it really helps with the grapes to ripen. So it's got more more months or more weeks to yes. really ripen fully yeah. um so probably very good for making still wine yes so we 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 very much produce we probably specialize here more so than the rest of the country mm -hmm. on, on production of our still mm -hmm. still wines and our still grape varieties yes um so whereas you know, kent sussex and so on they'll do a lot of sparkling yes here we we produce exceptional quality still fruit which is becoming more and more popular around the country with other winemakers as well mm. but is also enabling us to produce some fab fabulous still wines and i suppose if for anybody that's watching the episode to really understand the, the way the grapes need to to grow to ripen for sparkling wine it doesn't matter if they're not fully ripened and they could be high in acidity because you can deal with that in the winemaking there's and a lot aging uh, yeah. and so uh, sparkling wine is a lot more forgiving yes. in the sense of the winemakers can do a lot more whereas with still wines it really does come back down to the vineyard the fruit mm. has to be of the best quality in order if it's not then that will show very much in, in the in the finished wines true and i suppose um when we were talking earlier you said you know it 
the wine is made in the vineyard. Yes. And it's all about how you look after these vines and, and what you do sort of throughout the year. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, as the vineyard manager, I'm bound to say this is the most important <laughs> part of the entire business. But it's very oh, true it's at the end true. of the day. You know, and we are, we are very lucky here. We're, ha we're having so many different varieties which have grown up over time mm. that we're able to provide the winemakers with a massive scope of fruit for them to be able to blend and create yes. and create really interesting flavours with. But yeah, it all, it all literally comes down to the vineyard and, and how we, every year, how we begin, how we start pruning mm -hmm. and, and how the growing, growing season goes on, it really does. So one of the things I noticed as we were walking through these vines is um, the canes here, so that's what you call a cane, mm -hmm. they're completely clean. Yep. But if we sort of look to the right of us, uh -huh. we've got the, bun uh, the sort of end of the stalks. So the yep. part of the bunch is there just minus the grapes. So Tell us why it is different. What's so, happening in this vineyard? As part of our ongoing investment in the in the vineyard, mm -hmm. the year before last, we purchased a machine harvester. Okay. Um, and basically, that will straddle the it goes basically straddles over the top of the vine. Okay. Uh, and literally shakes it. Ah, so, so the grapes come off yeah, the stalks. So you, so it's the actual individual grapes that come off, yes. rather than the, the the whole bunch. Yes. Whereas on this side, you can see there are none of the, the leftover stalks because yes, you've they've been manually harvested. Yep. Yeah, so they'll literally just clip the whole bunch off. Okay. Um, now, though, both of those uh, methods of picking have their you know pluses and, and minuses. Mm -hmm. Again, that then affects what happens in the winery. Mm -hmm. um, but as we've moved to more and more machine picking, they're finding their more or they're as happy or if not more happy with the results from machine harvester so going forward we'll be doing more and more of that yes but i suppose to be able to machine harvest you've got the wider tracks so it's all about how you've planted and these vines are a lot younger so you have time to yes, consider absolutely. that um but what, what else is sort of the advantage or disadvantages because sometimes there's a perception one is better than the other but that's not necessarily true yeah. is it i mean it's been so i i, I was 15 years ago, I was working in Saint Emilion, and we were machine harvesting yes, then. There you go. Um, you know, it's <laughs> and Saint Emilion, so that's Bordeaux. You know, famous similar soils, famous for Merlot more than absolutely. even Cabernet. Yeah, stronger red fruits, but nevertheless, Indeed. you know, the quality is, is incredible. It, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you know, w worldwide machine harvesting has been a, a, a tradition for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. um, it gives us many, many ex uh, advantages in terms of when we can pick, for yes. example. So we can pick. Four o'clock in the morning. We could pick on a Sunday. You know, it could pick a lot quicker. Absolutely, as well. very much so. How many how many vines do you have here? How many plants? So we over? have over eighty thousand vines. Eighty thousand vines. Yes. That's a heck of a lot. Of That's wines. a lot. And for yeah, for people so to come eighty thousand vines. Hand. Yeah. How how long would that? How many people? So would that traditionally, take? Uh, until we until we invested in the harvester, we were taking up to five weeks with a team of between. <sighs> 20 and 25 people okay. to, to pick the entire vineyard. Um, That's quite a lot. That's quite a lot of labour, yes. which comes at quite That's, a cost yes. as well. Yes, and in addition, availability as well. Labour is, is harder and harder to come by. Um, so, you know, part of the reason why we invested in the machine was to, to fill that gap. Um, the machine itself can pick up to four tonnes an hour. Okay. Uh, a, an experienced picker. Yes. On a good day with yes. all the right conditions, with the wind behind them and so <laughs> on, they can pick roughly six to seven hundred kilos in a whole day. And how many kilos make a ton? Uh, that's not that good. A uh, thousand. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. So okay. It's, it's a phenomenal difference. So yeah. Um, and the machine also allows us to take advantage of our long growing degree days. So for example, if I wanted to leave a block of Pinot Noir for two weeks longer than we leave everything to ripen else, it for a bit longer. to leave it a little bit longer, yes. then I can do that because I can just go out with the machine and pick it. I don't have to think, will I be able to have pickers in two weeks time? Yes. So it, it takes away all sorts of issues like that, but it does also give us a much broader scope of, of what we can do with our fruit. It's true. I suppose it gives you that incredible yes. level of flexibility that yeah. you may not otherwise have. Yeah. I mean, so. there's no denying it came with a price and yes. we're, we're very lucky that we're, you know, we've got 125 acres, we've got our own winery on site so we mm. can produce that we can uh, use that fruit straight away uh, but increasingly it's a machine uh, picking is becoming more and more yes. of an industry standard yes great let's go and explore further absolutely
So Andy, what are we doing right now? What happens in the vineyard in December? So now we're into uh, post post harvest. Mm -hmm. um, it's been we've been probably six weeks into harvest now. Okay. The vines are basically shutting down, going into hibernation. Okay. Um, so now we can look at starting to prune. Um, with the pruning, basically, it's it's all about control. So we are we're, we're shaping the vine um, so it, it stays within these these boundary wires that we the trellising okay, wires. Okay, the trellising wires. Yeah, and then in addition, we're controlling the number of these these buds, Why is that which you important? can see here. So um, if we weren't if we weren't to control that at all, it would produce fruit year on year. Yes. However, the amount it would produce would slowly reduce because it's okay. producing fruit in order to to repopulate basically. Okay. Um, so what we try and do is we monitor obviously the yields from the year before, mm -hmm. the health of the vine, mm -hmm. the different varieties, and we're trying to balance between the amount of foliage we have, yes. the amount of fruit we have, and, and the longevity of the vine. So these vines are, these were put in the late 70s. Okay, so, so they're almost 50 year old these vines. These are nearly 50 year old and, vines. And what grape variety is uh, These are Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Um, Beautiful and gnarly, aren't they? Absolutely. If you look at these in comparison yes. to the ones we looked at before, yes. um, these trunks are obviously yes. they're huge. They're massively and different. And I suppose Pinot Noir is quite an important variety for this uh, winery because you were on the first yes, vineyard yes. So we were, plant yeah, we were one of the, 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 the first and certainly to, to plant them substantially. Mm. Um, and these are some of the original, the original plantings. That's incredible. And of course, it's one of the components yes. of our sparkling wine as well as our, our stills and our rosé. absolutely stunning. Let's have a little demo of how you would okay. pruning so the we vine. Would look Show us at, what you would do. So we'd remove a lot of these older wood. Yes. Um, so for example, that's a really good, nice, strong cane. It's, it's about as thick as a pencil. Yes. So you know, it's quite a nice, healthy cane. Mm -hmm. So we're going to um, leave that. So we leave that for next one there. Year. That would be yep for the coming season. Okay. So that would be say potentially it's it's going over there to mm -hmm. the left hand side. If we're having a second one, which we will, so we mm -hmm. want to find one to so go on, on the right hand side. One arm and one side, one on right, like one on left. Like traditional when you see a vine. Yes. The it's style of double the arms, which is what we're doing here. Yes. Um, and then we'd also leave two shorter. Okay. Canes there for the following, for the following year. year. So they're the returns. Um, so basically, we remove a lot of the, the bigger older wood first of all, yes. just so we can. Be... Oh, you've just taken a whole arm off, Andy. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. It seems okay. quite um, quite dramatic, it quite does. brutal, but as in necessary. Yeah, and for all the of this good. all of this wood has yes. grown in the past season. Okay, can I have so, a go? Absolutely. So what do I do? I just so press that there. Just and... Press the trigger down, and then it cuts off. There we go. God, it's like magic, isn't it? Thank you so much for letting me have a go. <laughs> Ollie, good to meet you. Good to meet you too. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. So this is Ollie. He is the chief winemaker of New Hall Wine Estate. And Ollie, you're about to show us around, aren't you? Yes, I'm going to show you around to our really impressive brand new winery. Just been built in 2021. Wow. It's state of the art. We've got some really fantastic equipment here. Mm -hmm. But first of all, I'd like to show you our sparkling wine room. Ooh, so we're going to the sparkling room. That yes. That should be fun. Before we go any further, I think it'd be really nice to talk about what is this? This is a traditional riddling rack. Um, so in um, Champagne, they would have loads of these and all by hands they would mm -hmm. riddle. Purpose of riddling, mm -hmm. we've got all this dead yeast. Ah, yes, fantastic. And the dead yeast is um, in there because we've got to make it carbonated. Yes. So normally it starts off on, on its, its side. side. Yes. So, yeah, Which, and then, is it so, so plum? And then we kind of... Yeah, so you, you do that and it basically riddles it into the yeah. neck. Um, so we'd be sort of moving it by hand slowly every single day. With oh, six weeks it does it. Yes. From, from its side into mm -hmm. the neck takes six weeks. It's a very long process. Okay. And I see some cages. So. Yes, we've got some lovely cages. This is a very good example of what it is beforehand when it's riddled. Okay. See, it's all ah, on its side. So you can actually see the yeast. That's really cool. And how long is it going to sit on its, uh, on its uh, leaves for? So this is a, um, a sparkling rosé, which we'll be releasing in another year and a half. Okay. So it's normally about 18 months on leaves. Mm -hmm. So I see it says that Greenwood, Greenwood Rosé Sparkling 2022. So the 
grapes were picked in August or September? Uh, September, 20? August, okay. yes, in and, September. Okay, and so you said you're going to then age it for at least a year and a half? A year and a half, it's only about 18 months. 18 so months, okay. It's been in bottle since um, June. Okay. So it was made in 2022, it's gone through um, one fermentation and tank, mm -hmm. and then it's gone through a process called tirage, which okay. is basically adding yeast and sugar again to a, a fine wine, to, mixing it up. Yes, to start the fermentation all over again. For and the then we bottle it. Got it, okay. And that's called tirage, and that's what ends up happening. So you can imagine this is all cloudy. <laughs> Um, when it's um, getting bottled, yes, and then the yeast end up dying, and it settles, as I said before, mm -hmm. on the side of the bottle. You see, that's lovely and clear. Yes, and all the all the yeast is now now dying, and that has got to go for a process called lysotolysis. Mm -hmm. So I suppose for anybody that has never seen this before, why is that so important? So part of it is obviously it adds flavour yep. to the wine, adds character, which is why you age it for longer. Mm -hmm. But also I suppose it's carbonating the wine, like you yes, said, and it adding is. bubbles. It's making it lovely and carbonated. It makes it very soft bubbles. Mm. That's traditional method. If you mm -hmm. did something like Charmat, which is known as tank method, mm -hmm. that can be very vigorous. And it's so quite, that's Prosecco's. It's like Prosecco's, that's, yes. Yeah, so that's how Prosecco's, Prosecco's made. So that's probably sort of the chief difference between yes. how we make champagne or English sparkling wine or Cap Classique in mm. South Africa. And I imagine um, Charmat method is so quick. Mm. This takes so much longer. And the so quality... 18 months to about six weeks. Isn't yes, it, exactly. Um, um, from secondary to finished product, yes. if you know what I mean. It has to be bottled and under tank, under pressure, mm -hmm. and it's instantly released. Yes. So it's, it's a very quick process. So you can actually release within the season that you pick the grapes. Exactly, yes, very fast. Whereas here you're saying you're going to release that in 2024. Yes, exactly. Wow. And it okay. has a bit of cork aging as well. Ah. Which um, also gives us a bit more um, complexity for aging on cork. So when you say cork aging, so we'll sort of do the different processes. So once you've done the disgorging, yep. which we will look at. You get to see shortly. Yes. Yep. Um, and then you sort of let the, the wine settle a bit for, what is it, three months, six months? Um, six months. Mm -hmm. So we also use a pro um, dosage as well, which mm -hmm. is really important, which I'll go through you guys later. Yes. Um, but at the moment, you can see we're just... These are all on their leaves waiting yes. to be wow. disgorged. So it's essentially like a, a sparkling wine hotel. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> wow. They do have to pay yes, uh, each they do. cage. Okay. So these cages are called gyro stillages and they can yes. hold about or a gyro five pallet. A gyro pallet yes. and they can hold at least 504 bottles. bottles. Okay. And in a previous episode, we sort of talk about sort of how long it takes to rotate. Mm -hmm. So is it roughly around, was it five days? These, how long does it take here? Well, these, are, these are quite posh dry rate pallets, mm. as we have here. Okay, and, let's um, have a look. These can do a, this is a double. Um, so we can wow. do a thousand bottles in a, um, a, a seven day. A thousand eight bottles. A thousand eight bottles oh. over a seven day cycle. Wow. This is a, this is quite a unique um, gyro. It mm -hmm. has a vibration okay. built in, so it allows the lees to fall into the neck a little bit I've faster. I've never seen that. That's incredible. So in in here at the moment, we've got you see everything's been lovely. Um, it's gone through its riddling process. Okay. And you can see in here. Ah, so we've got the, where's the plug? Just the plug's just there. Oh yes, it's right there. Just there. So this is, um, it's very, um, it's very well settled. It is very well settled. Nice and compact, really. Nice and compact. And then we move on to our next step, which is getting rid of that lease. Okay. So it has to go into this, which is called a neck freezer. Okay. And it's made up of vegetable-based glycol. Okay. And it can drop to about minus 28 degrees. Okay. And from that, Hang on, let me give this another wash. You can see it's like a little iceberg in there yes. now. So what do we do next? We're on to our disgorging arm. So okay. this is basically a very posh beer cap remover. It's uh, inside here. You can see a very small mechanism. Oh yes. And a very small sensor, which is here. So you take your bottle in your hands now and you place it and you push it up against the sensor shoots out the cactus very fast motion. Yes. 
But you see, you've hardly lost any wine. That's absolutely hardly. brilliant. So it's all about timing with this. Yes. You've got to make sure you don't overfreeze it because you yes. end up losing too much wine. Now, what is this liquid here? Everyone's probably wondering because it's going to come through the tubes. So this is a top up of itself. So okay, this is so its, its own same wine. wine. Same wine. And we're just going to top that up again. Top it up. But this is probably one of the most important steps in disgorging. Mm -hmm. This is almost like the seasoning beef before you send it out for someone yes. to taste it. It's, also, it's known as a dosage. Dosage. Or it's like a liqueur, basically. And it can be made up of past vintages. It can be made up of sugar, brandy. Yes. And also we tend to And you to mean grape sugar. You don't mean actual sugar. sugar, sugar. Yeah, no, before no anybody gets those two confused, no, <laughs> absolutely. It's, and that's yeah. supposed, it really helps flavor the wine, doesn't it? Does it's flavor. about what finish you want. And I imagine the dosage can also change from season to season, depending on the ripeness of the grapes yes. and what you want to try and, yeah. What we're trying to. to achieve as well, especially if we're making a rosé, sparkling rosé, yes. we might add a little bit of um, our own red. Ah, to so give it a bit of colour. A bit more colour, okay. yes. Okay. So that's what it means when, when, when you sort of read the wine tasting notes and it says, oh yes, it has 5% of still red. Yeah. And that's what it's to do with the colour. It's to do okay. with that and it's also, Obviously, everything's produced here on site, yes. so you're always keeping it in-house. You're, yes. you're not getting some sort of red wine from somewhere okay. else. Okay, that's great though. So everything is grown here, it's made on site. So typically when you see that on a wine label, it, when they say single estate, that means everything is All done in-house on, in -house yeah, exactly. on the premises. Fantastic. We turn that down, which is a okay. bit noisy. We move on to the next step. So, so I we've shall, got the corks here. You can see the difference. As well, you can imagine what See, a, a yeah, cork's it looks like, like this. Usually, it's uh, all squeezed in. I squeezed suppose we're in. gonna. And what is that? It's normally the pressure, isn't it? To... The pressure that gets put into the bottle, okay. which I shall uh, I shall do with the first one, and then you okay. can have a go. Yes. Okay. That's exciting. So if okay. I move along to this step here. Okay. So all our corks are in here. Right. And then the bottle is placed here. And you see, the cork has been put into the bottle. Superb. Amazing. And then the Amazing. last thing we've got to do is get the gold foil on. Get the this is just but the wire hood is going on. Ah, at the, the wire hood, of course. The cage. You get the cage. It's very fast. That's it's, it's might need a bit of a slow mo, but <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, yes, we've got to mix the dosage in. Okay. So you've got to be ah. careful. You ain't got anyone behind you. <laughs> and then it's moving on to the next couple of steps. Okay. Just cleaning the bottles. Okay. And then it finishes with a lovely gold foil which okay. is behind us over here. Right. But would you like to have a go? I would love to have a go. So cork in. I'll just take the bottle off for you. Okay. So what you're Keep aiming to do right now is okay. keep one hand at the low at the bottom about here. Yes. And then you're pushing it into that back plate there. Okay. Oh. Woo! <laughs> and do I'm not... a pro now. Okay, no, we'll... so. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah, just like that. Brilliant. And then we wash it. It's nice and warm it's in nice there, isn't warm, it? It's nice and warm, isn't it? After being out in the vineyard, it's been very cold. Okay, and this bit, this did make me laugh. Okay, we ready? Voila, there we have it. And then onto um, the gold foil. So, ah, then we wipe the bottle. Yep. Okay. So it's got to be well looked after now. I have to make yes. sure it's nice and dry. Nice and dry. Gold foil on. Oops. Ah, okay. Do about a thousand bottles in a day. Okay. Yeah, that's it, that's it. There, locked in. And then at what point do I bring my thumb uh, over? As soon as the pops. Um, pops off, yeah. You can see the solid ice there. Ready? Just watch your finger. Go. There you go, yeah. There you go, thumb on top. Woo! There we go. Woo! It's not Formula One, sorry guys. <laughs> there we go. So That's first. ready to go into the and line. what do we call this process? Disgorging. Disgorging, ah, oh, but manually disgorging manually versus disgorging. the machine. Yes. Fantastic. Okay, thank you That's quite so right. much. Onto the line it goes. Onto the line it goes, and then through the, ah uh, oh yes, the corking. So do you like some tissue paper? <laughs> I just want to go and <laughs> taste it. Are you ready? 
I am ready. Right, have you got... So, disgorging a magnum. Scoff out of the way. Um, right, sleeves up. <laughs> so this is 2014, Blanc okay. de Blanc as well, so it's... <gasps> Gosh. There you go, it's nearly there. There you go. It ready? I thought I almost had it perfect, as gorging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, thank you very much. Thank you. That'll be the one for the show in the next couple of weeks. Hi, Jacques. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So tell us what you do at Newhall Wine Estate. So I recently joined the team. Um, I was started here four months ago as assistant winemaker slash production manager. So, okay. Yeah, um, I think they recruited me with my knowledge about red wine making and barrel aged wine. Ah, I hear a bit so, of an accent. So yes. is that South African? <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Yeah. And you're going to teach us all about red wine yeah. making today. Yeah. Fantastic. So right, where should we start? Over here is where everything starts. These are our four open top variable, variable capacity fermenters. So you've got 6,000 litres there yes. and 4,500 litres. Yes. Okay, so, I love the smell. I can actually smell them. And what is this? This is rosé currently. Okay. This is just a storage oh, vessel see the color. right now. Mm -hmm. But you'll see the tops have these um, systems where we can lift the lid so you can ah. adjust how much you want inside the tank. Okay. So that's quite interesting. And yeah, just to keep all flies and oxygen and everything out so keep the wine as pure and safe as we can. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. And what is the sort of standard type of red wine that you're making here at Newhall? So we have um, a Baron's Lane Red, which yes. is a red blend. So it's most of our red varieties blended into a singular blend. Okay. And then we also have a Pinot Noir Precoce. So okay, that, that's the early ripening Pinot Noir. Early ripening Pinot Noir, yes. So it ripens, well, a few weeks ahead of yeah. standard Pinot Noir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's the only reds we do for now, but... Yes. Um, my plan is to change that up a bit. Oh, yeah. and what yeah. do you have in the pipeline? Can I you have share? some Rondo in the barrels over there. We can walk there if you want. Yes, to. let's do yeah, that. Yeah. I really do like Rondo because I've seen a lot of Rondo being um, grown and made in Wales. Yeah, well, the winemakers I've talked to said it's quite unheard of to do a single varietal mm, Rondo. It's true. But I'm, it's, I'm trying my luck because it's yes. obviously it's if I pull it off, it's quite unique and yes. not a lot of people do it. So if I can pull it off, yes. hopefully it works. So what do we have here? I see four barrels. Yes, so this one is empty at the moment. Okay. But these ones, let me just move this thing out of the way. So they're, I see Burgoyne, so the barrels are from Burgundy. Yes. And we've got Rondo. So, so the difference between C1, C2, C3 is I use different enzymes, different yeasts, different oh. punch down strategies on all of them. So this is your experimentation corner, yes. really. Yes, so all three barrels, different yes. everything, except you'll see these two barrels are exactly the same. And this yes. one is a bit older. Ah. So obviously from the newer ones, you'll get more oak and this one a bit And less. more spice. Yes. So whereas this one is, it, it, and typically we're aging in barrels here, yeah. is to allow the oxygen yeah. to sort of it's enter. Basically and... slowly letting oxygen mm. penetrate the wine. Because if you give it all at once, it will spoil the wine. Here it goes in gradually, so it slowly. develops the wine a lot. Oh, that's yeah. right. So there's kind of more finesse as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Brilliant. Softens and rounds the wine. Yeah. yeah. And typically, what, what kind of grape is Rondo? Is it thick-skinned, thin-skinned? Is it going to be quite a strong wine, or is it going to be quite I think light it's, and elegant? Yeah, I think it's quite elegant. I mean, from what I have in the barrel, it's quite elegant and not a lot of color, quite light. Yes, quite light. So, so yeah. almost like Pinot Noir. Almost, yeah. Just or... a little tint darker than Pinot Noir, okay. so it's somewhere in between a darker red and Pinot Noir, somewhere nice. in between there. Yes, okay. So it's quite interesting. That's quite fantastic. How it's developing is quite... Quite interesting, yeah. yeah. Great, okay. Should we see what other areas you work in when it comes to red, red wine. wine making? Okay, yeah, yeah? yeah. Let's do it. So now we're heading up to our lab. So they've recently built this with a new winery. I think it's about two years old. So a lot of equipment in here we can use yes. to control everything. Okay. But yeah, stay, please stay inside. So you're actually going to let me blend some wine yes. today? Yes. Gosh, this is going to be a first. This is going to be fantastic. So these four bottles you see in front of you are all from the tanks and that then we just the saw. three barrels. Yes. So we've got here variety. Red, red blend. blend. Yeah. So you'll tell us what that is. Yeah. We have a Rondo. So we saw some of those yeah. in tank. We've got another Rondo over here. Ah, okay. Those are the three barrels, yeah. Three, ah, so that's BC3, BC1, and then we've got, I imagine, BC2. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, And so. then, just for interest's sake, you'll see mm -hmm. on the bottle on the right, that's rosé. So that's the big colour ah. difference. 
That's the juice. Obviously, it will get lighter, but that's the big color difference you'll see. So that's quite... That's a couple of hours mm -hmm. on skins, and that's weeks on skins. Wow, yeah. that is remarkably different. Looks like ink compared mm. to some strawberry juice. Strawberry juice, <laughs> I love that. And I suppose this is the typical test tube that yes. you'd be blending wine yes. in. And it's got the different measures, so this is where you experiment on what you want your blends to exactly. look like. Great, okay. So... Should we start? Yes. Okay, yes. so what do we do? So, I've tasted all four varieties. I think it's time for you to teach me how to blend wine. All good, yeah. Okay? Let's do it. So, step one, we so, make a note of, in the register yeah. of the trials. So, you will normally start off with, obviously, your favorite one, the mm -hmm. one you like the most, okay. and then choose, just at random sometimes, mm -hmm. the amount in 100 mils Let's you want. See. So, my favorite was this one here, yeah. number three. And what I think I might do, so you've got the... I'm measuring here is you said you always start with 225 don't you yeah you can go up more if you want i think i'm gonna go with 40 percent okay. because i really liked that one oops that might have been a bit much i might tip it out a bit this is my first time so <laughs> <laughs> okay and then i really liked the red blend okay. and what were the grapes there that was region rondo triumph and Acalon. okay region rondo triumph and Acalon. I'm going to do another forty percent of that. Okay. I see. I've got a a winemaker helper here. <laughs> you have twenty percent left, so use it okay. wisely. <laughs> use it wisely. Do you know what? I think I'm going to do ten percent each okay. of bottle number two, so the C three, and then the C two, because I think then we can see what that balances, because they both brought something very different yeah. to the blend. Okay. So this technically should be a li little bit less oaky. Yes. And more fruit forward. Okay. Yeah. And we have a clear glass. So, time to taste. Ooh. Yeah, how do I shake that actually? Never mind. Let's try. Oh, it smells great. I think you need to grab yourself a glass and taste my handiwork. Let's do it. Hmm. And I need honest feedback. What would you do more or less of? I think the balance of this is, I mean, I know you make the wine, but the balance of this is really rather nice. It smells like cured meats. I like it. Meats, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's almost Chocolate like a, yeah, an old world uh, Shiraz. Yeah. Olives no, I and think that's lovely. Yeah. That's very nice. Some greenness coming through yeah. from the yeah. red blend. Yeah, lovely. So Jacques, if you're looking for one apprentice, I think you are <laughs> let number me know. one on my list. Oh my gosh, really? Right, cheers to that. Cheers. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you for the blending lesson. Awesome. It's a, just a pleasure. Lucy, tell us what you do at Newhall Wine Estate. Cool. Um, so I am the commercial manager at Newhall Wine Estates, which means I'm responsible for everything post-production. Once the wine has left the winery, um, it comes into my team's control, and it's our job to get it out there and to be enjoyed to the best of its ability. I'm really excited to try your wines. Thank you. But especially because Newhall Wine Estate is not far from a very significant wine growing region. Yeah, so vines were actually planted in Purley um, since the 12th century. And in fact, it was the records that were read by the Greenwood family that prompted the very first vines to be planted here today. So what are we going to start with, Lucy? Um, I thought we would start with a signature. Um, I thought that this might be right up your streets. Um, we have some lovely Germanic varieties and Alsatian varieties here, including Pinot Gris that I know <gasps> That's one of my favourite grapes, one of my favourite white grapes. Um, we are lucky enough to have 18 different grape varieties and, uh, grown on the estate and they sort of fall between sparkling mm -hmm. varieties 
really citrusy, zesty varieties, and then our very soft aromatic varieties. Mm -hmm. And this is our aromatic offering. Okay. Super interesting. I mean, this is going to be one of the first times I try Alsatian varieties in England because, of course, we sail through the Alsace on our Rhine cruises. So it'd be very nice to see what an English version of this tastes like. Thank so you very much. Let's, let's taste. Let's try. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. There's a lot of peaches. What else? There's so there's some, yeah. The first thing I always get is is absolutely fleshy stone fruit. Fruit, yeah, a bit of apricot. But apricot, um, but then I get the rose hip and the Turkish delight. Mm, that's right. So what do we pair with this Pinot Gris? Because typically I think of sort of Thai food or mm -hmm. sort of aromatic Asian food. So yeah, I've always said it works really well with Thai green curry, lemongrass and ginger. But the first food I ever paired with a signature um, when I joined Newhall was Lambton and Jackson's smoked salmon. Um, and this is their juniper smoked salmon. It is a cold smoked salmon for mm -hmm. um, around 24 hours at 24 degrees. The mm -hmm. cold smoking allows it to have this very melt in the mouth texture. It's very delicate, thank you. Very, very delicate, mm -hmm. and the juniper that it's smoked with mm -hmm. is is perfect with our aromatic grape varieties. It's soft, it's not overpowering. I think it's a lovely, lovely combination. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I love it when the food enhances mm -hmm. wine and wine enhances food, I and mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful pairing. Mm -hmm. This is very, very soft. If we'd had anything more powerful, it would overpower mm -hmm. the brilliant work that they've done in the smokery. So a likely smoked salmon mm -hmm. and the signature or any kind of Pinot Gris is a really good suggestion. Exactly that. Okay. What are we going to try next, Lucy? Okay. So I think the next wine um, that I'd really love to show you is our new 2022 Backers. Mm -hmm. Backers is, of course, one of our trademark signature mm -hmm. iconic varieties in, um, at Newhall mm -hmm. and in the Crouch Valley wine region in general. Okay. And so this is a 2022. Okay, so this is last year. So Bacchus yeah. is probably a variety that is, um, you, you want to bottle it quite fresh, don't you? Because you want the aromatics to really shine. Exactly that. Stylistically in the UK, it's really interesting to see different interpretations of Bacchus from mm -hmm. county to county, from vineyard to vineyard. 2022 for us, I would say it's a really warm, very nice, long, mm -hmm. fairly relaxed growing season. We were able to leave the fruit on the vine for a few weeks longer than we normally would. That's quite a treat, isn't it? So the grapes actually have the chance to ripen properly. Mm -hmm. So, Plus, oh, wow. we were able to do some quite special things with Bacchus, given we have it planted from every decade mm -hmm. um, all around the estate. Right. That smell. I get um, elderflower. Mm -hmm. Typical Bacchus characteristic. Lime. Yeah, typical again. Very good. Um, I get green gauge and kiwi. Yes, kiwi. On the nose, it's very, very um, light, but quite floral. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's the palette that's yep. the biggest surprise. This is much richer than our 21 vintage. Mm. It's a lot, a lot more of our... It's got really texture ripe. as well, doesn't it? Thank you very much. That so, was, yeah, that was a, a... Which makes it a really nice food one again. Mm, exactly that. I think it was very, very easy to pair yeah. this with some richer foods. It's true. And what would you pair back as? So with? I've gone for something a little bit more robust, mm -hmm. and this is the Mold and Cure. So ah. this has been smoked for, again, cold smoked. Mm -hmm. It's been smoked in oak, um, ah. which the juniper hadn't. Okay. This is the melt in the mouth texture. It's mm -hmm. a lot richer. The Bacchus can handle this absolutely perfectly. And I would never have thought that, something that's sort mm -hmm. of aromatic. Yeah, that was beautiful. I think it really highlights very beautifully the, um, the tropical notes in yeah. the fruit as well. Um, yeah, I think it brings out, yeah. you know, the, obviously salmon always, always work with citrusy mm. um, light fruits. And I think it's just, yeah, it, it really, both of them yes. really support each other. I think so. Right, so this is a bit of a treat. What are we trying next? So Gina Mavacase, um, actually in, in, in comparison to some other uh, varieties at Newhall. These are these are toddlers. Oh. These were planted just in 2018. Oh, look at that. Absolute babies. Um, this is actually the first precoce that we um, produced from our babies. Ooh, I love the nose. Um, precoce has the most beautiful nose. Mm -hmm. The bunches are just so lovely. Yeah. They're they're beautiful. Relatively small, but very compact um, berries. They they've got 
the lovely autumnal fruits. Mm. We've got some stewed fruits and cooked fruits, some fresh plums, some black cherries. But I think the bit that I like, it's the forest floor. Yes. Slightly smoky, some white it pepper, has, but at the underlying a, base. It has a really nice lift though as well, which I think, again, great with um, food. And mm. I'm thinking almost like, I don't know, one of... I think this cheese, the harder cheese, perhaps. That's right. So this is um, exactly that. This is an oak cheese, and I know, I know they say that tannin and wine just not always bring out the best in cheese and protein. But actually, mm. a low soft tannin wine goes so well with the smoked cheese. Do you like it? Mm. <laughs> no, I really like that. That's delicious. Thank you. Um, and what do we do next? So for our final wine, I thought we would have to do our pearly gold dessert wine. So, uh, so this yeah. is a bit of a superstar wine, isn't it? Um, it's yes, a, it's, <laughs> it's a ninety high. It's almost a hundred pointer. Was it ninety seven or ninety eight points? Yes, it was. It was. It was. It was very nice surprise. We made this. We made this sort of behind closed doors. Um, way back in 2017 okay and we kind of we made we wanted to mimic a nice wine in the winery because obviously we're not blessed with a very hot summer followed mm -hmm. by a very cold winter so, so an so, ice wine like look alike here or an ice wine from, yeah just from... mimicked in the in the winery so we we froze some juice i can't tell you the trade secrets because of it course. took quite a long time to make that's quite cool, right? but we also had it um once we finished uh, producing the wine we then aged it in these this exact chestnut barrel oh, wow so these are chestnut okay we knew we wanted to use chestnut after um mr greenwood Junior had travelled to Thank Canada you. and seen their ah, love the of chestnuts and ice wine as well. Exactly that. So oh, um, wow. Piers was instrumental in oh, helping wow. us develop this style. So I'm going to hazard a guess. You're going to pair this with a blue I am. cheese. It, it has to happen. It has to be. I mean, it's tried and tested. Yes. We're, we're big cheese lovers. Yes. Um, a glass of pearly gold mm -hmm. and some this is Shropshire smoked blue mm -hmm. again from Lambton and Jackson. This is a bit of a heady combination lovely saltiness of the cheese and richness from the oak combined with some really good acidity in this wine. So for anyone else that may not like blue cheese, for example, what else would you pair a wine uh, like this? A uh, lemon cheesecake. Oh, oh hands lemon down. Cheesecake, yes. Lemon cheesecake, um, sweet desserts. Yes. Um, I know people say don't always pair sweet with sweet, but I can tell you sweet. having had enough of the pearly gold yes. in my lifetime, it's absolutely Birthday gorgeous. Cake? Birthday cake, absolutely. I've always said pour over ice cream. Last yes. Christmas, it was Ooh. over ice cream. Perfect. Vanilla or any particular flavour? Um, mine was a particular vanilla. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, or just have a small ice cold glass like limoncello. I like Doesn't that. Doesn't need food. I like that. We should try it with the Ooh. cheese though. So let's grab a piece. That's beautiful cheese. Mm. I've never tried a cheese like this kind of blue cheese. Mm, difference with so the... And the difference of the smoked cheese, mm -hmm. again, we've got texture. Mm. You feel there seems to be a bit three-dimensional. And that's the same, actually, with this wine. We've got the smoked, we've mm. got the salty, we've got the rich characters. Mm -hmm. and the then salty with the, with the sweet mm. is fantastic. Mm. So this cheese is actually making this wine taste even better. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the A to Z of Wine, where we featured Winter, an English winery Newhall wine estate in Essex, pioneers of the modern day English sparkling wine, and also the first vineyard in the UK to plant Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris and Bacchus grapes. We spend time outside in the vineyard to see how the grape vines evolve in winter, and I have a go at pruning the vines with the vineyard manager Andy. Inside the winery, we learn why champagne and traditional method English sparkling wine has to cost more than Charmat Method Prosecco with head winemaker Ollie. You see me have a go on the bottling line as I learn each step from mechanically disgorging an English sparkling wine bottle to corking, adding the cage and foil before it gets labelled and ready for market. And then I get to manually disgorge a magnum. Gosh, it was heavy. Vineyard manager Jacques shows us how red wine is made and trains his new apprentice, me, on how to blend my very own red wine. I think I'll call it Chateau Chenaz. We end in the festive food and wine pairing masterclass with commercial manager Lucy, where our final pairing is the delicious award-winning English equivalent to ice wine, the Pearl Eye Gold. Perfect to celebrate with some blue cheese. <laughs>